There are three main categories of guns in Cyberpunk 2077. Classic power guns which can ricochet or fire exploding bullets, tech guns that go through walls like a railgun or shoot lightning rounds, and finally smart guns, which require barely any aim whatsoever and serve as perfect sidearms for netrunners. In this video, we're taking a detailed look into the workings of all three types after update 2.0 slash 2.1 to figure out which is best for you and some cool uses for each. So let's get to it. First up, and by far the largest set of weapons to choose from in-game, are the very classic power weapons, utilising traditional technology and ammunition to deliver an experience we'd all be very used to from other games. Literally every single gun type has at least a couple of power weapons in its ranks, and generally they're the most versatile and moddable of all the gun types. Not just moddable, with distinctive weapon mods which we'll discuss, but also with scopes, muzzles and silencers. Indeed, bar for a couple of very special iconics, power guns are the the only gun type which we can use for stealth, though net running and throwing knives also make for excellent tools in that camp. If you're looking to stealth it with guns, then your best bet is probably a decent pistol. Silencing a Nue or Tame Yura earlier on can work wonders, whilst Her Majesty is great if you have Phantom Liberty, or the best in house is without a doubt Pride, though that can only be unlocked after completing the Sun ending. Additionally, with stealth, you want to spec at least into these three perks from the Cool Tree, delaying enemy detection, improving movement after takedowns, and and most importantly, providing a preview of estimated damage so we know whether a one shot is possible. The entire crouch tree is also useful if you're sneaking around a lot. But stealth is not the only merit to power weapons. Indeed, these guns also have the ricochet feature, enabling us to simply shoot at the walls or floor and obtain rebound shots for potentially the same damage as normal if we spec into it well. The main things you'll want for this style of play is the ballistic core processor, as it'll mark ricochet trajectory to make it a genuinely viable strategy. It can also make aiming kind of easier, with guaranteed hits, provided a target is highlighted green. Kind of like a poor man's smart gun that's a bit more faff to use. And whilst Ricochet doesn't have its own dedicated perk tree like Tekken smart guns, it is possible to improve it with certain muzzles. Farkalak on ARs and SMGs, or the Babaroga on handguns. Additionally, non-iconic and Xmod 2 models can be modded with Critichet, capable of improving Ricochet crit chance by up to 30%. Is it worth highly specking into Ricochet, well, maybe not so much anymore. What with stealth kills being so effective if pulled off successfully, and now the alternative of explosive rounds. Ricochet is not as powerful as either of these, nor is it any more effective than simply aiming and hitting properly. And anyone who's a half decent shot is just as well off specking into reducing their recoil with other muzzles or using different weapon mods. So unless you're going for a bullseye build, say, I maybe wouldn't bother too much with Ricochet. Swiss Cheese is another power specific mod which uses more stamina but ignores up to 30% more armor for greater damage, whilst Pyro applies extra thermal damage and is very likely to also proc a burning effect. However, after you defeat the Chimera in Phantom Liberty and harvest its core, something you may very well want to craft is the iconic Firecracker mod, a one of a kind item which applies the explosive rounds I mentioned to any power weapon. This deals a 5% burn chance but more importantly has bullets explode explode into deadly shrapnel, disabling any chance of ricochet of course, but replacing it instead with splash damage against all nearby enemies and becoming much more deadly against multiple foes. What's more, it can be unequipped and used on as many different guns as you like. Of course, unlike ricochets, you do now actually have to hit the enemies properly, but in fairness with this, you do have to hit them less, technically, if they're doing splash damage. Only problem is, crafting firecracker locks you out of the other three chimera mods. You can only choose one, so you'll want to be dead set on which type of weapon you prefer before making that decision. Having ranked every weapon in the game then, twice, once in 1.6 and again for 2.0 slash 2.1, here are some top picks for power weapons. If you want to learn more, they're timestamped in their respective gun class videos. There's the brilliant one-shotting pride pistol, as mentioned before, the silent Mancinella, only stealth revolver in the game now, Buzzsaw is another one of a kind, a power SMG which can also penetrate walls, then the Pajar Xmod 2 with the Neil mod attached is a fast firing one shot knee capping machine. Prejudice is an assault rifle that synergizes beautifully with Pride. Then Osprey and Hypercritical are her battle rifles disguised as snipers, or precision rifles respectively. Whilst the MA70 X Mod 2 is a fantastically explosive LMG that doesn't even require firecracker to explode. There's loads more to choose from than that, these are just some of the more interesting ones. Other than that, if you want to improve your proficiency with power weapons further, it's best to choose one of three 
specialist groups, which each have a dedicated perk tree. Shotguns and LMGs for a tanky soldier, ARs and SMGs for a classic run and gun, or pistols, revolvers, snipers and precision rifles for a more pinpoint accurate, possibly stealthy tactical operative, or a cowboy in the case of revolvers. Overall, power is easily the most versatile weapon class and probably best for those wanting a classic shooter experience. Tech weapons then are utter powerhouses, basically serving as railguns to propel every shot forward with a high-powered electromagnetic charge, strong enough to go through walls and turn this into a game of shooting red outlines from safely behind cover. These are most easy to see with the ping quick hack, though non-netrunners have the option of oracle optics and just marking foes as we see them with the middle mouse button, or recon grenades can be good here too. The caveat to these guns is that they will require literal charging time to get off all these powerful shots. Less of a fire when ready, and more a get ready to fire. This charge will normally take from half a second to 1.5 depending on the gun, and the longer charges are generally for things like snipers, which to be fair are a lot more powerful and make the game pretty easy from a good vantage point. These guns are however off the table when it comes to pure stealth, as they can't be silenced save for one. Reed's Pariah Pistol, which itself can only be obtained by completing the King of Wands ending for Phantom Liberty. Sadly, nothing else is silent because stealth one-shots through walls is something I guess the devs thought would be too broken. Instead, the tech weapon mods are more geared towards improving the speed and power of these guns, with supercharger firing faster but weaker and more tiresome rounds, see-through alternatively making shots more penetrative, though the most spectacular of the regular three is without a doubt spine tickler, leaning more into an alternative to the bolt element of tech guns with a high chance to trigger an EMP when firing at full charge. Basically, any tech weapon now can take on the same power as the fan favourite Yinglong Smart SMG, and it looks awesome. But if you want to amp the charge of any moddable tech weapon up to 11, and have chosen this as your primary weapon type for the game, you'll want to craft the Chimera Cool Wall Puncher, literally doubling the weapon charge while still firing at the same speed, with absolutely no penalties for firing through armour or cover. Now, tech weapons already score some of the highest damage points of the game, so slapping this on a Nekamata, a Satan or even an Achilles could potentially even be overkill if you're one-shotting most everyone anyway. But if you feel you'd actually benefit from the bonus damage, then it's probably the most effective of all four Chimera mods. Just choose carefully. Aside from shooting through walls though, 2.0 also added a whole nother string to tech guns in the form of bolt shots, which get their very own perk tree in the tech attributes. They take a little practice on getting the timing right, but essentially releasing the trigger just before full charge will fire a much more damaging but far less penetrative shots, erupting in sparks of blue for one of the more spectacular gun effects that the game has to offer. Of course, you want to reserve these for when you're not shooting through cover so it works out economically, but basically this makes tech weapons worth using at all times. Further perks can allow bolts to ignore armour, and at level 20 tech, Chain Lightning can even trigger a splash damage effect with electricity spreading to nearby enemies. A similar effect to explosive rounds from the power weapon segments, and making both classes equally viable against groups, though there are far less tech weapons to sift through than power. About 27, including Iconics across the game, with some of the most notable, including Lizzie and Pariah from Pistols, the Quasar and Burria from Revolvers, though bear in mind the Comrade's Hammer iconic of that now has been nerfed to not penetrate walls but rather fire a big explosion. So bear in mind when using that one, it's probably best reserved now for cool stunts on bikes or one-shotting people at point-blank range. Raiju on the other hand is particularly awesome as it can fire fully automatically and doesn't even need to charge up to penetrate cover, while Satara is probably the best shotgun in the game on account of how it can one-shot anyone through walls. And the Breakthrough Sniper can both shoot through cover without charging and also ricochet afterwards. So a lot of strong options in this class, with I suppose the caveat being that whilst they do mostly shoot through walls, they also demand total and utter accuracy from you the player, something that isn't a problem for the third type. Finally then, possibly the most cyberpunk s class of weaponry in the game, smart guns utilise gyrojet technology to serve as mini self-guided missiles which should hit a target if just fired in their general vicinity. This does however require the smart link cyberware in order to work properly, which can be acquired easily from any ripperdock. And with that obtained, these are arguably the most straightforward set of weapons to shoot, but much like those from tech, they do often require a short waiting period, not to charge up 
output but to lock on. And you'll want to keep an eye on the targeting squares as they aren't locked on until they're a fully unbroken shape. You may also find them to be a little weaker than their tech and power counterparts. After all, guns that do the aiming for you do have to have a caveat somewhere, mostly. I mean, Bajing Chong and Ashura have both exceptions. The best use of smart weapons though, post 2.0, at least in my opinion, is in a net gunning build, i.e. synergizing a cyber deck with smart guns. And indeed, they do have a lot of built-in synergies. For starters, smart perks sit right alongside cyber deck ones in the intelligence attributes. There often won't be enough perks in a net running build to buy up gun specific ones from body reflexes and cool, but that doesn't entirely matter. Many of those are recoil and aim based, which isn't a problem with smart guns. Their power is increased much more alongside the right quick hacks. For example, I criticized the Yinglong SMG in SMG's ranked for feeling a little too weak now, at least on its own. But by uploading multiple stacks of the cyberware malfunction hack to an enemy first, it'll compound Yinglong's damage by even up to 120%, restoring it to the electrical powerhouse that it should be. What's more, the recirculation perk can restore RAM after smart gun neutralizations to create a powerful feedback loop. Similarly, the Shingen Mark V prototype isn't all too special by itself. It's only merits being an excellent application of burn. However, combine that with the Contagion Quick Hack and it'll cause enemies to explode in puffs of green, which is the main idea behind my Crowd Killer build, or Plague Doctor, I think was a better name suggested by a few, which is part of my 7 in 1 build video for all the cyberdex along with also the net gunner a build which itself uses the powerline cyberdeck which actually has an ability to upload hacks faster when firing smart weapons a fantastic synergy especially in early game as for specific smart gun mods it's a choice between gambatia making bullets faster and more powerful but also less likely to land a hit panorama which simply increases reticle size allowing us to be even less accurate though i'd say the best for most guns especially automatic ones is definitely Headhopper, which shoots more targets at a time, locks on faster, and does increased headshot damage. Though granted, that mod is both a rarer random drop and more rarely crops up at weapon vendors, a place you can purchase all mods now, save for the Chimera ones, by refreshing until they come up. As for the Smart Chimera mod, that's called Hecatomy, and I would only craft it if you're dead set on using smart guns for the whole game. It's good, but not as effective as the previous two, I wouldn't say. With a 5% chance to upload a random hack depending on the body parts, it can save you a little RAM on hacking, but given a good netrunner build should be chaining specific queues of hacks anyway, it's not as powerful as you might think. More serving as a fun little box of chocolates never knowing what hack you're gonna get type thing. For the most part, Headhopper would be my only go-to smart mod. A couple other things to note with this type, whilst they can bend around cover a bit, this often won't work depending on the angle and might become a little tricky. Also, there's not really much much chance for stealthing about with these, as they can neither be silenced or even scoped, with the built-in firing and targeting system intrinsic to the workings of the gun. The only exception would be the iconic Pishtets, which we can pick up during the Spy in the Jungle gig from Phantom Liberty. Otherwise, stealthy netrunners are probably better off bringing a silenced pistol or even throwing weapons. As for some standout, brilliant smart guns, we of course have Skippy, mostly for entertainment purposes, Yinglong and the Shingen Mark V, as mentioned, are probably two of the absolute best smart guns, Bajing Chong for purely explosive endgame fun, Divided We Stand or Hercules if you want to further be a plague spreader, or for one-shot headshots that don't require aiming, the Ashura Sniper. And whilst these are mostly to support netrunners now, the other beauty to these guns is they enable a run and gun build which can predominantly focus on the running parts, casually shooting off some bullets when we see someone just praying that they'll hit, and having our prayers answered by science. Starting around does after after all, help mitigate a lot of damage now, so much so that I found this method survivable even outside a net running build. So definitely worth giving these a go regardless of how you're playing, but especially worth it if you're running a cyber deck. So now let's quickly sum up specifically what each weapon type is best used for and the style of gameplay that it lends itself to. I'll repeat what I said in 1.6 about power weapons. They are certainly the most classic feeling, but also without a doubt the most versatile, with at least three totally different ways they can be best used before we even split them into types of gun. Perfect for stealth, ricochet, and explosive splash damage. And you can learn a lot more about these guns in each of my post 2.0 gun rankings. As for tech, I 
previously labeled it most powerful, and I will repeat that same sentiment here. Most of these guns came out near the top of each of their respective rankings, and as somebody who prefers precision aiming to spray and pray, this is definitely the gun type I would use in open, non-stealth combat. Finally, smart, I'd no longer call lazy as such, but rather label it as most synergizing for netrunners, or most liberating in terms of how we can dart about during a fight with the appropriate reflex perks. So power, most classic, tech, most powerful, and smart, most synergizing. In fact, smart guns are so different from the rest that I've had a lot of requests for another ranking video specifically for the smart guns. If that's something you want to see, then subscribe to the channel, and I'll be dropping it sometime after hitting 100k. For now, go check out this video for a ton of build ideas combining hacking with smart guns, and comment below on this one which gun type is your favourite and why. Huge thanks, as always, to my awesome patrons for keeping the channel alive and helping me to deliver more of the videos that you guys want. I'm Sam Bram, and I'll see you in the next one.